I asked uh, the audience about their knowledge of artificial intelligence. I'm sure I'm going to get quite uh, a, a number of you tell us what artificial intelligence is and uh, also about Internet of Things. So the idea this afternoon for about 20 or so minutes is not to talk computeries. That is not to go into uh, details of uh, the algorithm related to artificial intelligence and Internet of Things, but to you know to uh, use a language that uh, can reach as many of us as possible. Now I'd like to congratulate PSSDC. I tell you, I'm sure you may know or may not know that you are the most impactful training so capacity building institution for civil servants in the whole of Nigeria. You know, the honorable commissioner made a mention of it and I agree with her, you are the most impactful. Uh, the products of uh, this center are well regarded all over the labor state civil service. And if you removed PSSDC from the equation of the Lagos State Government or Lagos State Civil Service, you have a drop in the rate of productivity of the workforce, about 60%. So I'd like to congratulate you on that. And I tell you, you have a huge resource, a huge as asset in the person of Michael Adewusi, who is uh, doing a course in artificial intelligence, machine learning, and all of this in Lagos State University. Africa Center of Excellence that is funded by the World Bank. And of course, we have our DG who has brought a freshness of vision to this center, Dr. Ajose Adeogu. Now, is the topic we're looking at too futuristic, artificial intelligence? Is it too futuristic? Is Internet of Things, you know, beyond our noses now? Is it far off? Listen, gentlemen, I tell you this now. I tell you this not because if I left where I am right now in Agbara and I'm going to Magodo, I'm going to LS, L, uh, uh, LSS, uh, you know, go to your center. I just take a Google map, plug in my location, and there I go. That's artificial intelligence. Artificial intelligence is right here with us. You are composing a text message to Mrs. Fola Williams. And the SMS, as you're going along or you're sending, uh, uh, a WhatsApp message, you get predictive tests. We we'll say, okay, this is this, this is the word that I think you want to use. That's artificial intelligence. You type in in Microsoft Word, and you misspell a name, or excuse me, you misspell a word. It will auto correct for you, and then you can decide to say, okay, I accept this or I don't accept that. That is artificial intelligence. Now, when your email client uh, your Gmail, your uh, Yahoo or whatever email ID you're using, when it, it finds that, oh, this mail is coming from something that is sent in a box, it throws it into a spam folder. So that is artificial intelligence. Now, I'm sure many of you have this where you talk to your computer and it converts it to text, voice to text, that's artificial intelligence or text to voice. A call is coming in and it's calling the name of the person. Oh, this is Fuller Williams is calling. Ah, that's artificial intelligence. You have personal uh, assistance, smart personal assistance, speech recognition, medical imaging. You're searching for, say, uh, Dr. Ajose Adeogu. And it gives you Google search. It gives you what can what you can call the best as if you 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 asking uh, Google to tell you something about Lagos State. It gives you a lot some predictive answers. What you can call the best answers that is artificial intelligence. Some recommendation online mobile banking issues fraud alert prevention. You fly in a plane. Uh, by, actually, by, by the way, I'm I'm, I'm led to fly fly a boy seven three seven eight hundred series. And when you to, when, I mean, when when you engage when you engage the autopilot, or say you live in Lagos for Abuja, you get to you, you get to cruise altitude and you engage the autopilot. Autopilot takes over. That's artificial intelligence. 
plagiarism checker, help for visually impaired. So what I'm saying at the start of this presentation is that artificial intelligence is not out there. Artificial intelligence is right here with us. Walk back with me to 1964. I was in uh, a secondary school, St. Malachi's College in Sapley. So my parents were in Lagos in the Kedja. So uh, somebody would send, like this is, this is uh, a telegram sent by Mr. Ojo. Peter arriving 17, uh, 17, meet at Maryland. Telegram. Today, this is not it. I mean, text message will just come straight to my, my, my dad's uh, uh, ble you know, blessed memory will have come to his, uh, his inbox, SMS inbox. This is a letter I wrote to him in 1967. Uh, and today, we don't write such letters. We we'll use, we'll use uh, email or text messaging or whatever other messaging app that we, we, we want to use. So. 10 years from now, ladies and gentlemen, this is PSSDC. 10 years from now, it will not be people sitting down like this. Just like the Honorable Commissioner said, we are in a different world. 10 years from now, we'll be in another world that will be quite, quite different from now. We're going to have personalized training by AI tutors. You're going to have virtual reality classrooms. So the PSSDC we are seeing today is not going to be what we are going to see in 10 years. It's not going to be what we are going to see in 20 years as a consequence of the application of artificial intelligence. You know, humans over the years we want to want to be like God, we want to play God. You know the Tower of Babel story. God has given us sweetness, honey, and all of that. We have artificial sweetness, of course, for health reasons. Eyelashes, God has given us eyelashes. Uh, some people will scrape off God's eyelashes and put on artificial ones. God has given you some skin, nice skin. You scrape it off and want to be light. You have organs, maybe on a kind of failure. So we have artificial things, heart, artificial heart, artificial kidney, artificial legs, artificial everything, everything. And then artificial intelligence. So ladies and gentlemen, let's start with some definition. Let's continue with some definition of artificial intelligence, which I gleaned from Wikipedia today. So as you can see, it's a simulation of simulation, simulate, simulating machines to think like humans and mimic their actions. So any machine that exhibits traits associated with a human mind, such as learning and problem solving is said to be artificially intelligent, artificial, not natural. So it's a wide ranging branch of computer science, uh, which we offer, you know, nicely in Lagos State University and uh, about 15 other universities at the postgraduate level. Uh, as I said, just trying to simulate human intelligence. Uh, you can see some other uh, definitions extending that, but look at the second bullet. See, there are two main classes of artificial intelligence, AI for short. By the way, almost on an every other basis, every other day basis, there's a program on DSTV on artificial intelligence, which I love to watch, which goes to tell us that the future of the world, the future of productivity is in artificial intelligence. And of course, don't let me scare you by saying that this artificial intelligence is what, what is going to uh, obliterate humans from the face of the earth because we are not going to get uh, robots that are artificially intelligent, uh, intelligence driven that will exterminate us. Well, that is the uh, doomsday scenario. So, we have what we call the narrow or weak AI. That's the that's where we are now. And then the strong artificial intelligence AGI, which is the future, which is the ideal, where the uh, the machine will just take complete control. Hey, here's the man, John McCarthy, who is uh, known to be the originator or the father of artificial intelligence. That was 1955, 56. So let's look at uh, the history. Let's go back in, in time. So we have 1950s, uh, we have artificial intelligence, engineering of making intelligent machines and programs 
and they have machine learning in, in, in within it. Ability to learn without being explicitly programmed. And then you have deep learning. Deep learning is the one where it's almost like humans, like, almost like a neural networks, like activities in a cerebral cortex or in any part of the brain. And as you can see, this up to 2017 and it's uh, going on from there. So coming back to artificial intelligence, which is like the umbrella term within which you have machine learning. So artificial intelligence, computers that can imitate human intellect and behavior. The machine learning, these are statistical algorithms that will enable AI implement through data. And then, as I said, deep learning, it's a subset of machine learning, which follows neural networking. It behaves almost like a human being. I'm sure you've seen uh, uh, robots, robots with uh, uh, behaving like humans and uh, attending to people in hotels and, uh, and airports and elsewhere. You know, these ones are moving closely to deep learning. Uh, this is another which shows uh, the timeline. Now, this one also gives you historical view of artificial intelligence all the way there. So there are types, you have uh, predictive analytics, that's machine learning, text-to-speech, which I mentioned earlier. These days, I do not need to get uh, a typist, I do not need to type myself, all I need to do is talk to my machine. This machine that I'm holding, I talk to it, and it types in my text. Of course, there'll be errors, but after weeks of uh, speech recognition it not you know rise the thing types it uh, as accurately as i as i would have done if i typed it there's uh text to speech you can also have like in this computer that i have and i'm sure in most of the ones that you are holding uh, if you click uh, the sound ask it to play what you have on the screen it will read it out to you Image recognition, language processing, expert systems, planning and organization, robotics. So these are types of artificial intelligence. As I said, the idea today is not to bug you with uh, the details, the algorithms, and so on, but just to let us have a general view of what artificial intelligence is about, that it is here with us, that it will continue to be with us, and you continue to evolve up to a point that it will be like uh, like humans. Let me stop sharing my screen and then tell you a few things that look. The Americans, some three weeks ago, sent Perseverance, a robot, to Mars. Perseverance is there on Mars. It's artificially intelligent. It moves around Mars, collects rocks analyzes it in situ and send data to earth. So that is one step. If you, uh, when uh, George Orwell wrote his novel way, way back, say 1984, it was like freak fiction. So at some point, what I'm gonna be telling you will be like fiction, but you'll find that that is gonna happen because of the trajectory that artificial intelligence is following. And I said, Dr. Ajose Adoku, in 10 years' time, your center, our center, will not be the same because of the deployment of uh, technology that I'm so delighted. You know, I said you brought in freshness of vision, and you are getting the backing of the commissioner, you're getting the backing of our governor. So things will just keep th things will keep improving. So back to this. We talk about enhancing productivity. That is the your job, uh, Doctor. I just do. That's the job of the center. So how does AI play a role in enhancing productivity? And I'm going to be broad now. Productivity in the health sector, in education, in vehicular or transport movement, in business, in travel industry, 
in social media, AI applies and applies through enhancing productivity. McKinsey has said that, look, by 2030, robots driven by AI will replace uh, 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 humans. And uh, he said that 375 million people will switch jobs to other categories on account of AI. So as I said, AI will impact our lives through you know, smartphones. Our phones are getting smarter, smarter by the day. Social media platforms, yes, e-commerce, uh, you want to buy some product, you go online, uh, Jumia, Konga, whatever, and uh, make suggestions to you. And uh, you are able to make a purchase and all that, that's artificial intelligence. Autonomous vehicles, in a little while, these vehicles will come into Lagos. What are autonomous vehicles? They have the mind of their own, more or less, mind of their own. Uh, they are programmed in such a way that they will go through Third Milan Bridge or Fourth Milan Bridge at that time. And uh, you just see the, the person is seated at the back, like our honorable uh, commissioner was seated, giving us the lecture. You will not see the driver because there's no driver. The thing will take her to Victoria, that will take her to Kaduna. No, okay, fine. Anywhere she, anywhere she wants to go to. We take uh, Ms. Bola William uh, uh, to, uh, to, to anywhere she wants to go to, and also myself from Lasso to Alausa. That's artificial intelligence. So it's part of our lives and enhancing productivity. Let's look at AI in public service. Now, you treating files, operations in the office of the DG. There are several operations happening in your, your, your office, DG. AI can play roles. The office of the permanent secretary, office of the commissioner, deputy governor, governor, president of Nigeria, the legislature, the judiciary, artificial intelligence is knocking, knocking and coming. So for us today at this forum, 18th day of March 2021 is a matter of getting aware, knowing that the good times are really coming to roll. For us teachers, artificial intelligence also plays some role here continue to play roles, Medicare, engineering, and the others. You know, there are two strands to my presentation. One, artificial intelligence. The other one, internet of things. If I asked many of you about artificial intelligence, I want to speculate that about 80% will tell us something that is close to what artificial intelligence will ask you, internet of things. I want to speculate that just about 40, 50% of us will be able to not tell us what the of things is, but the idea, the next five minutes or so is to share with you what Internet of Things is, the promise and the challenges for improving productivity. So what's Internet of Things? Look, you have the internet, yeah? the internet, you, 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 where you are with your handheld device, getting to me through the internet. Now, imagine a world, which is here now, where the internet connects your refrigerator, connects your car, connects your laptop, connects your phone, connects your bed, connects your toilet, connects your everything. That is internet of things. Things, you know what you write, uh, to abbreviate it, you write IOT, but the O is usually in lowercase. That's capital I, small O, and capital T, IOT, this IOT, where everything is connected. Okay, so I want to get a drink in my refrigerator. Uh, I just talk to the refrigerator, the refrigerator, me, I need a drink. And so how would it get to me? That's another matter for another day. See, if the refrigerator now finds that I like to drink Coca-Cola and it's seen that the refrigerator is getting low. Let me see people's faces. Refrigerator is getting low on Coca-Cola. It will by itself order, order for Coca-Cola. It will by itself get the payment made in uh, whatever the store is. It will by itself get, so Internet of Things means everything, maybe not all, everything that we need, that we are, that, that are utility, uh, productivity tools are connected 
via the internet and then to us. And we're able to control this lot. So imagine a world where that is happening and it's happening right now. This is the architecture, don't need to bother about it, just to know that uh, it's largely uh, going to be driven efficiently by 5G. You know, 5G, we are running away from it, not for, not for too long, in fact, because 5G is going to be, give us the speed and the reach that can enable all of these things on this slide to be connected. So let's look at how it has evolved. We have what I've called the pre-internet, human to human. You have the internet itself, internet of services, internet of people, the internet of things where everything is uh, connected. So what are the advantages as I come very close to the end of this short presentation? What are the advantages? For the students, oh, adaptable learning, smart software for learning. I'm the chairman of council. Sorry, I don't, I, I, I don't mean to, you know, I just, that's on the side. I'm the chairman of council of the biggest university in the whole of Africa. And that is the National Open University of Nigeria. We enroll, wait for it, 600,000 students in the National Open University of Nigeria. The next to us is the University of South Africa. UNISA enrolls about 400,000. Now, over the last three years that I've been chairman of council, what we have been doing is to see how we can adapt the delivery to each of our students. So we have virtual learning environments. And uh, at this stage, let me assure uh, Dr. Uh, Jose Aduoku uh, that uh, we'll be able to support your work. I just say Harrison, sir. Uh, excuse me, I just say Harrison. I'm so sorry, just I'm, I'm so sorry. It's just... Uh, clashing with uh, another name that you may be familiar with. I just say, Aris, you know that, look, we are able to support you in developing or strengthening your learning management system because we have about the best, about the best in the whole of this continent. Like I said, in the last three years as chairman of council, we have been developing, strengthening uh, virtual learning environment, you know, uh, for each of us, custom, custom making it for the individual needs of our learners. And uh, I, I want to go back some, uh, let's see now, eight, nine years, well, I was appointed by the federal government uh, to be, see the federal government had what you call the, uh, uh, the federal government e-learning, e-learning program. That's training all federal civil servants. Like the commissioner said, you train about 40,000. Now, I was able to train 71,000 71, federal civil servants all over Nigeria, all the nooks and crannies of Nigeria, using the e-learning platform. I was director of, of, that, of that. So I'll be able to uh, support uh, Dr. Jose Harrison and your team for uh, in achieving your, your mandate or your learning management system. So adaptable learning, smart software for, for learning, improved learning results. You can see for the teachers, you can see for the administrators, quite a lot of benefits that Internet of Things can give to us. So as I mentioned for students, these are uh, some of the advantages, learning everywhere, improved learning results. Of course, there are disadvantages of Internet of Things, compatibility in terms of standards, threats, privacy, getting hacked, intrusion. But by the way, you are lucky because you have one of the best ethical hacker in the world. That's uh, uh, Michael Adeus. He's uh, well certificated and, and, uh, and globally known as somebody who can block hackers from <laughs> uh, threatening the, your system. Intrusion widespread my well. As I close, let me make a few recommendations for action by Dr. Ajose Harrison and the team. I think you can organize ministry-based ministry sessions to raise the awareness of all civil servants in Lagos State 
or the fundamentals of artificial intelligence in terms of things. Why, 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 why do I say that? I'm saying this because many people in the civil service, in Lagos State, maybe elsewhere, are not aware of what artificial intelligence is and Internet of Things. So first step is awareness raising, ministry based, webinar. So you can say webinar for Ministry of Education for next week. You're going to talk about this, artificial intelligence and Internet of Things, just for them to be aware of what is happening right now that they are using and uh, uh, unaware that that's what they are using and the direction that things will move and how they can use it to improve their productivity and also about Internet of Things. What's next? Next is for the center to conduct needs assessment of components of work in the service. Look, there are several, you, you can do a mapping or you can, you can decompose all the tasks that the Ministry of Education of Health or Sports and all that they will do. And then see those components that will benefit from AI and lead to significant improvement in productivity. That, in other words, you, 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 you commission some of your staff to conduct this needs assessment Minist across ministries. What are those things that they are doing that I, AI can assist in, in, in doing? Let's take the simple thing like typing a memo. Typing a memo, it has some algorithms, step-by-step -step things. So if you are able to develop, that's going to be the third bullet you are seeing then develop some artificial intelligence that can enable them do the memo very easily, then that's going to lead to significant improvement in productivity. So after they define those components, then you work with Lasso. We have great AI teams there and the private sector to develop AI on the identified components. After that, you now make a name for yourself. We now have AI developed by PSSDC, and that will be the first in Nigeria for you to achieve that, for, the, for you to achieve that, for, uh, in achieving that feat. So after developing that, you run short courses uh, for uh, middle level officers. I said middle level because the people on top will go, will go with the knowledge, but the middle level officers, they'll be there for longer. So they will be able to deploy the, AI that you have developed, and over time, DG, sir, you continue refinement and further development of AI for enhancing productivity of civil servants in Lagos. If I've not done anything in this, in this uh, presentation, one thing I would like to do, well, one, one thing I'd like to uh, underline and to say that, oh, yes, I think uh, I achieved some result is that at the end of this forum, of this forum, DG, so, I will be pleased if you can, at the end of a day of the day, long or short, develop some AI and you make noise about it. This PSS DC develop AI to address a, a, a particular common task or tasks okay. that are in the, the civil service to enhance their productivity. Okay, Once again, thank you for inviting me and uh, look forward to interacting with uh, uh, yes, the sir, participants. Thank you. Yeah. Thank you very much, Prof. We are indeed very, very, very privileged and, and very, very happy, happy to have you share your, share your thoughts, thoughts with us on this AI, AI and uh, Internet of Things, sir. I'm sure some, some of the participants are having some, some hearing some of these terminologies for the first time. I want to thank you very much on behalf of the DG for all the suggestions and all the way forward that you have actually given us in PSSDC. We are very happy and we are uh, we thank you for this door that you have opened for us. This collaboration, not only with LASU, but always also with our distinguished professor. Uh, distinguished professor Peter Okebukola, on behalf of the DG, once again, we want to appreciate you, sir. We want to say, Thank you very much for sharing your well-versed and well-researched knowledge of, yes. Sir, some people will still want to ask some questions. Already, some people have been typing questions in the, type, uh, the uh, question box. Okay. But before then, sir, I want to just go through what you have given us, that 
whether we like it or not, artificial intelligence is here with us. Sure. It's not a thing of tomorrow. It no. is now, and it is reality. It is the new normal. And whether we like it or not, we have to contend with it, or else it will run not out. It will run us out of existence. And we pray we are not going out of existence by the grace of God. <laughs> you have also told us, sir, that in the next ten years, things will not be like what we are having now. Things will have moved forward. We don't have the the normal teacher classroom relationship again, but rather it's going to be virtual. In some cases, robotics will have taken over. So we all, all of us, the attendees, the facilitators, even not to our DG, as you have said, we need to buckle up and be ready for that time. And I pray we'll be able to do it, sir. You went further and gave us some definitions about artificial intelligence, which I will not go through. But however, you have told us that it is machine learning. It is also deep learning. It is machine learning. It is deep learning. And you gave us the types of artificial intelligence that we have, that they are predictive. And so, sorry, sorry, moderator. Sorry, yes, moderator. Sir. I'm sorry to interrupt you. I really yes, am so sorry, please. Yeah, what has happened is that I asked, I, I'm running, a, I'm, I'm actually running two council meetings overlapping. So oh. I told the DG, uh, Dr. Jose Harrison, Harrison, and I, he said I, I will have to stop at uh, five minutes after one. So I, I don't mind if you, I wouldn't mind if you let me take the questions that are coming up so that I can uh, leave to go to the other uh, assignments. Thank you, meeting, sir. Thank you very much, sir. Well, distinguished participants, uh, with the permission of the DG, if you have any question for Prof, because he has less than five minutes to take off to other assignments, please, 10 minutes. you can 10 minutes. yourself. Okay, 10 minutes, 10 minutes. Sir. Thank you, yes. sir.